Motorsports Generation Hennigan tonight. His dad is racing in Greenville with the Tom Series. But it's little Dustin Hennigan out of Marshall, Texas. Eight year, or Ten years old, sorry. Racing Graham, eight. And then we have the young lady out of Marshall, Texas, the 16, the younger sister to the number 16 of Dustin. It's Brooklyn Hennigan out of Marshall. So I believe they're just hot lapping right now. Tell you racing and uh, racing Graham into the 16 of Dustin Hingen had an outstanding race at um, Boot Hill on May the 27th. Racing Graham got by the 16 of Hennigan with two laps to go, and Dustin Hennigan, cool, calm, and collected, set his crosshairs to the back of the 28, ran him down, and passed him pretty cleanly. I don't really think they even touched. But the green flag's out there. Heat race is underway here tonight. Presented by Mark Still Federal Credit Union. Graham's going to get the race lead into one and two on this brand new racetrack. And oh, Hennigan gets in a little hot and heavy. I like this uh, new track that Gene's prepared. The little mini Arklatex Speedway. Loving it. If I could fit in one of these, I'd love to have a mini wedge cart. Oh, I know. You can't. You can't even fit in them. Racing Graham going to approach the 16 of Hennigan. She might hear him say, okay, my brother's not leading, so let me play a little block here for you and help my brother out. And it's going to work. The game is playing to the favor of the 16 of Brooklyn Hennigan, who's looking to go a lap down. And here comes Dustin Hennigan, going to try to race to the inside of lap. Traffic goes three wide here to one and two. Off of two, down the back straight over the white flag is out. And Dustin Hennigan going to take the race lead. Oh, my. Racing Graham getting bottled up there. But Racing Graham says, I'm not going to be denied. He'll drive it into the three deep for the final time. Off of four. What a run by Racing, but it'll come up a little bit short. Dustin Hennigan wins another one at Arklatex. Into the tail. Lights go out. Eight laps of distance. Ke Lil Wyatt. Oh, and Cody Meyer says, I like the start, but I don't think the flagman is. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't know if that's going to work or if it's going to happen, but did it just happen? Cody Myers got the Walmart special times eight. Oh, my. Is the caution flag not going to come out? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm not the lead scorer. I don't make the calls, and I would never throw my girl Jill Shannon under the bus or any of the flagmen, but I'm still not ever going to be sure about that start. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cody Myers gets the Walmart special times 70. Oh, my. One lap is scored. Myers got the race lead before he even got to the flag stand. So heat race number one for the factory stocks. It's all nose the trail right now. Cowboy got to put the heat on for second. He'll go to the inside, down the back, straight over to the 42. And Timothy holding him to the cloud. And he'll throw the slight job in the three and four. Will he clear him? No, he won't. The 42 on the loud pedal. Keeps him on us on the outside, but Cowboy... Looking awfully good to the inside. That's a good battle side by side for second right now. Door to door here at the Arkle Tech Speedway. Cowboy going to take that second spot and set his crosshairs to the back. Shrunk lid of the 55 in of Myers. Look at how deep Cowboy can drive the 45 into the corner. He'll smash the loud pedal off of four with his crosshairs dialed to the back of the 55 of Myers out of Bozier City. Bozier City, Cashana, Louisiana up front here at Arkle Tech. The pair of Texans started this one from the front row, although Myers got a valiant start. Dropping the loose onto the racetrack and fanning out on the bottom. Oh, and he gets into the race leader. Cody Myers for the race lead. Cowboy, how about a shot in the shorts in four? In the one. He's going to throw it down to the low side of the racetrack. Will he clear him for the slide job? He'll look to cross up the racetrack and have Myers clear to go side by side for the race lead down the back straight away. What a heat race to open the night. Cowboy Blanchard trying to steal one here with two laps to go at the flag stand. They're door-to-door -door for the race lead. What a race. Cowboy Blanchard came to Arklatex to put on a show tonight. And it's evident. Cody Myers says, I'm going to do what I can to back up what I did at Boot Hill last week and show all you folks that it was no fluke as he'll drive it through three and four with a white flag in his face this time by for the white 55. The 45. Nipping at his heels and he'll dive it back to the bottom into one and two. He'll show some respect to 55. Give him some room. What a race. Arkansas Tech Speedway race fans. What more do you want? Down the back straight away into turn number three and four for the final time. They are... Door to door, off of four. Your winner gonna go to Bozier City's Cody Myers in 55. Full board off of four. We are underway in this eight lap heat race affair. Should be a good one. Lewis gonna get the whole shot from the outside of the front row into turn number one for the first time. Dean Rasco gonna go three wide there for fourth and a one and two. 
Jeff Lewis with a big push. Here comes the Nightmare. Michael Knighton going to knock on the door to the inside and look to size seven. And they're going to go three wide for the race lead. Here comes the five-time track champ, Doug Vick Jr. around the hub of the racetrack. And the car pushed like a dump truck. But Lewis going to lead lap number one here at Arkle Tech tonight. Lewis going to lead him back into one and two. Off a dude down the back straightaway. Doug Vick Jr. is rolling around that bottom. I think he wants the car to kind of roll over a little bit more. But I tell you what, it's got a lot of dig. And the car's roll, actually rolled over very good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Doug Vick Jr. was stormy in the passenger seat. Directed traffic takes the race lead away from the 40 of Jeff Lewis. Jeff Lewis had some high praise this weekend on the World Wide Web about the driver of the 4 of Vick Jr. He said, you know, regardless if he's younger than I am or if I'm older than he is, that's a driver that everybody can model themselves of to look after. A great guy is Doug Vick Jr. He'd do anything for anyone, and Jeff Lewis has a lot of respect for him, and I'll tell you what. Oh, my goodness. Smoke for the four of Vick Jr. Heartbreak Hotel, and the caution flag will wave. Lord lights out. We go green. Here comes the Nightmare. Michael Knighton going to get a good restart and dive it to the bottom into one and two. Coming up short. Tyler Gibson doing a nice job holding on to that big body. Christensen Motorsports 23 with Dean Rasco nipping at his heels here off of turn number four. Somebody's banging out. I think it may be the 23 banging out. It's kind of hard to tell up here in the box. As Rasco going to go to the inside? No, that's Freddie Blanchard. Uh, Gibson and the 45 of Rasco made a little bit of slight contact there to the midpoint of the back chute. Two laps to go. Freddie Blanchard shooting bullets. That thing is banging out. He sounds like he's got a bowling ball stuck in the trunk. My goodness. Off of four, the white flag's going to wait for Jeff Lewis. He's got that 40 car hooked up and digging now. Had to get his entry quite right, but you can see how well the car is sticking right there on the entry into the center of the corner. Had a hard time getting that car to rotate without it pushing the first couple of laps. And is looking very good now on Alpha 4. He'll receive the face full of checkered flag. It's over the outside front row to Cody Myers in a nice main event. Hot in Louisiana's Jeff Lewis wins Heat 2 tonight. Second goes to the Nightmare. Michael Knighton, Dino, Dean Rasco, and Colt 45. And the bootlegger chassis takes third. Go out. And we go green with... So Gibson elects to go to the tail and pushes up with Turner not being there. Put Bo Perry inside of two and Andy Stevens on the pole and they went backwards quick fast and in a hurry right now from that outside line Graham and Warren up front for the race lead they go side by side off of turn number four Sean Graham with a new wrap coming out this weekend and he has been trying to get that triple X car digging and it's looking awfully good tonight going door to door with the car that finished second here in the 5,000 win Cajun Classic one year ago in October with Jason Eagles behind the wheel and a slight job he'll clear him but a big push there off of four opens up the door look at Pilkin to drive that car in off of four we got a good race shaping up here for the race lead. In a one and two. Josh Warren going to try to put the heat back on. And Graham got to cross him over off the exit of the two. What a good race. Crossing underneath the 62 exit. Crossing back up top for the race lead is trouble. Sean Graham. And here comes Warren back to the inside. The Cadillac is rolling the night. Tell you what. Been some good factory stock action here in these first three heats. As Pilkington ranks back at third. Bo Perry is fourth. Josh Warren still in second with the crosshairs down on the back deck. Later of the triple X rocket of trouble. Sean Graham moves right from Shreveport, Louisiana tonight. So the Shreveport Natives one and two right now. Sit the Marshall Texan into the third spot with Ronald Pilkington there to the 22 race car. Those Hennigan Motorsports chassis two and third right now. Sean Graham, of course, fabricates and builds his own cars out of his own, I will say out of his shop, out of his house. Underneath the garage unit. <laughs> Sean's really, really fast tonight. Jamie Wills built a good power plant. That WCH power giving him all the oomph he needs to stay up front and in command of this one here in Vivian with six in two laps to go this time by. And a good run for Sean Graham. Look out up front lap traffic at Jacob Squirrely. But Graham is able to separate, distance himself as the lap car of Ed Jacob goes around. No harm, no foul. We're clean and green. Your top four separated by about the same distance around this racetrack right now. One more quarter mile trip to go for the Shreveport native Sean Graham. 
who has had a dominant run from outside of row number two from fourth to first in this one. And a great run to open it up with a slight job move on the 62X of Josh Warren, who's been hot as anyone. Off of four, how about it? First heat race winner, Arco Texas of the season goes to Sean Graham with Triple X. Second goes to 62 X and Josh Warren. Rollo, Ronald Pookington, third and 22 out of Marshall. Bo Perry will take fourth. 17, the lights go out, eight laps, here we go. Three wide for third, off the exit of two. Headed down the back straight away. Graham and Vic Jr. door to door in the turn number three. They're still going to go wheel to wheel. In the three and four, they're going to pull up from the tail tank of the 16 at Beasley. Vic Jr. had to kind of get up on the binders there a little bit as the 22 tried to cross the lane underneath. And Vic Jr. looking to avoid some contact there. Had to get out of the gas as Robert Graham has a good race car tonight. Pretty quick, trying to hunt down Beasley. Tell you what, Billy Robinson is up front and he is gone with a win. Vic Jr. into the front straightaway wall. Tell you, it looks like a, it looked like slight contact, but that little bit of contact with the wall right there can knock the toe out and really affect the handling of your race car. We'll see what happens. He cannot find a way around the 22. As the 22 ties it to the bottom of the inside of the 16 of Beasley. He's going to give Beasley some respect and gives him some room on the outside. What a race here for second as Billy Robinson putting a whooping on him. I'll tell you what, we're four in and four to go this time by Robinson. If we don't get a caution, he, he'll lap. He might lap all the way up to that late pack, which ends with Trent Humphrey there. Vic Jr. finally getting around the 22 there for that third spot. And now he's trying to hunt down 16 of Beasley. Two good friends. They go three wide for second off of turn number four. Billy Robinson that much faster tonight, but who cares because the battle for second is a good one. Beasley got a cross underneath there down the back straight away to the inside of the four. Vic Jr. in the turn number three. Will he throw the whole slide job? He'll come up the racetrack. Yes. No, he won't. He'll give Vic Jr. some respect and give him all the room he wants. Wouldn't have cleared him. White flags out for the zero one, one And Bill Cornbread teaks it. Oh, my. But let's be honest. Cornbread's showing some smoke. Off of four with the white flag waving. Billy Robinson in the pack with these guys. Checkers are out for Billy Robinson as everyone else has just seen the white flag. Oh my goodness. Wyatt Williams for the first time in his flagging career had to throw the checkers and the white all at the same time for the winner and the rest of the pack. Off of four. Second goes to the four. Vic Jr. Third, 16 to Jason Beasley. Richard Holt with a major push there off of two. Opens up the door for Josh Bauckham. Bauckham not able to get around, though. Bauckham moving from the limited modified division into this pro mod division. And that is an interesting change because Josh was still very competitive in the limited class. But this, of course, much more affordable, I imagine, for the racer who is a former track champion at Champion Park. And he's won his share at Boot Hill and here at Arkla, Texas as well. Bauckham undoubtedly had cemented his... Stature is one of the best drivers in that limited division for many years, and I promise you he'll be one of the guys that they're going to be looking to compete with week in and week out here in this class once he gets that thing dialed into expectation. Everybody just kind of floating around the racetrack right now as Big Show Eric Norris is setting a tour pace out front. Billy Robinson put the whooping on him and he won. Right now, Eric Norris doing the same. He may end up lapping the same amount of cars as Robinson did, but maybe not in quite the dominant, the same type of dominance as Robinson did. He was much faster. However, what's it matter? If you're up front leading, oh my goodness gracious. Richard Holt just went over the top of three and four and the yellow is going to wave.
Kevin Peters, he is in 21 in the 81. Nope, Engel's not making it. Cody Tupper in the 23. Three wide there for second already on the start. The Tuppers go door to door in the one and two. In the one and two, Spear on the outside. Trying to get the whole shot, and the yellow's gonna wave here in the early going. And limited mod heat this race year. Number. We've had five different winners as well. Brandon Baldo is on the last two. Lights out, we go green. Cody Tupper, that young man who got a good start on the previous initial start, is going to go to the inside of his dad for the race lead, and he's got a good bike to the inside of that Western Flyer. He's in an IRP. Cody and dad. Door door. Here, Barrett comes Kevin Peters. Oh, Pena. Kevin Peters looking very good in this one in 21. The former Oval 1 modified driver. Got out of racing for quite some time. He had a mod and a limited when he was in this sport. He'll go to the inside for the race lead there. Momentarily show some... Love there to the 22 MAGA. Dylan Spear is firing a bullet back in the turns one and two. Dylan Spear. Spear appears to be the quickest car on the racetrack right now, but Kevin Peters has other plans and wants to show that he has got a piece to deal with in this one. He is going to make the 22 MAGA Spear earn it. Father and son do battle here in the one and two. Dad right now has third. He's not going to let son get it. He says, son, you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to steal this one away from me, literally. And off of four, the Western Fire leads the IRP. Dad, Dad Cliff Tupper Jr. to the Western Fire. The reigning Boot Hill Speedway track champion. Down the back straight away, Dylan Spear just broke it. Kevin Peters is going to take the race lead. Kevin Peters takes the race lead as Dylan Spear broke something on the midpoint with three laps to go at the flag stand for Kevin Peters in 21 from Longview, Texas. Kevin Peters has never won at the Arkle Tech Speedway in his career. And he just got back in the dirt track racing. And he's looking very, very, very good tonight. That's four varies. Maybe three. Off of four, they're still door-to-door -door for a second. A good race here. The IRP now has the outside lane. And some momentum around the outside of his dad, Cliff Tupper. Cody showing some love. And hammering the outside of the Arkle Tech Speedway right now. All the momentum working to his advantage there. Off of the center of the corner, four, with a white flag waving. Kevin Peters gone with a win. Off of turn number four, ready to receive a face full of checkered flag. He says, how do you like me now? Kevin Peters gets the win. Second goes to the 23 of Cody Tupper over Dad Cliff Tupper in the 23. The green is out. Here we go. And a one for the first time. They go three wide for the race lead. Here comes Jody D. Oh, my goodness. That Western Flyer is digging tonight. Down the back straightaway. Jody Davidson going to try to show up to Arkwell Tech Speedway tonight and get a win in the limited modified class in his first ever chance to do it. And he's going to take the race lead and lead lap one as they're three wide for second. Here comes Patton, the six, rolling like a big shot right around the hub. They're one by two by two. Down the back straightaway. Approaching three. It's seven CC of Colby Williams to the outside. Looking for a run to the outside of the six of Patton. Patton got the low side working good, or the center. And this racetrack is so wide. Sometimes it looks like these guys are on the bottom. They're really in the center. All the guys way up top, up top. So right now, Jody Davidson trying to fill in out the racetrack. He hasn't raced these limiteds much, but uh, it'd be interesting tonight if he's able to get a victory. I'd be interested to talk to Jody. Or maybe during the fan appreciation part, we'll talk to Jody maybe about how he's taking a liking to this class real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like I said, he won last Saturday at Chatham. And he's uh, been so committed to running modifieds for his career. I feel like he probably still has a mod in his shop, but he's really, really competitive. It kind of makes me scratch my head, and Jody, don't hurt me for saying this. If you watch it again on Race on Texas, it makes me wonder why you didn't come race for 5,000 at Boot Hill last week. As good of a racer as you are, I believe you should have been there. <laughs> and you're good at that racetrack, but hey, I'm not going to hammer you on that because you won anyway. If you're good like you are right now, you'll be here at the Tootsie Smith Memorial, and that'll work. Off of four, Jody D still leads in 90. Second is Wayne Patton being hunted hard by the 7CC of Colby Williams and the one. They're door to door here for the fourth spot. 14 of Barry Hornbeck on the 7C of Connor Williams. Connor with a big push, and the caution is going to wave. Lights are out. We're going green. They're door to door for the race lead off the exit of two. These guys right here. 
out of the same area. I've done some battles over the years in mod ranks and such and so on. All right now, off of four, Jody D leads. But the White Six, who won that 2000 win at Chatham last month, they're side by side for the race lead off the exit of two. Wayne Patton trying to take it away from Jody D. Jody Davidson for the final time in the three, got to power it in to the outside of Arkla Tex and Wayne Patton to the inside. Jody Davidson wins it. When Davidson wins it in 90, the six will settle for second. Factory Stock Racing is excited to be here in a race car tonight. Kind of miss my little buddy a little bit, but <laughs> I'm proud of him and I'm happy to see him race. So he's got the ladies tonight he's going to have to fend off. I'm going to give him all kind of heck for that. Not doing a bad job, though. Toby holding on to second while Brittany Shreen, who won the last four cylinder race here, is way out front. Ashton Owens. Happy 18th birthday to Ashton Owens, who rides there in third in the five. I know this class may not appear too exciting when only three cars are out here, but uh, when we get a good feel to these, you never know what's going to happen. They... I've seen some very exciting races with these cars, and we have a decent field of them. The most affordable or economical way to get into this sport is this class right here. All you need to do is cut the roof off, throw you a cage, and bust the windows out of a four-cylinder car. You're ready to rock and roll. Two more trips, one and a half laps to go for Brittany Shireen, who is gone. White flag out for Brittany Shireen. Toby Davis trying to get a runner up in his first ever start. Ava four, face full of checkered flag, gonna go to Brittany Shereen from Shreveport, Louisiana. The battle for seconds down the back straight away for the final time in the three. Davis to the outside of Ashton Owens. Owens has ran third the entire race, but on the final lap she pulls the trigger. But Davis to the outside. Look out, don't put her in the wall, buddy. <laughs> so Ashton Owens will come up and steal it. I don't, I don't think Berkey knew I was going to put him on the mic, but uh, Berkey, I ain't, yeah. I ain't seen you. Tell you what, I always miss you. <laughs> You're my boy, man. I mean, tell you, you don't miss What's me, though. What's the question? I, I, there wasn't a question. I just want to tell you how much I miss you. I got you, brother. I know you're not that you're not that kind of dude. I know, and no, not really though, man. You've been working at this racetrack for quite some time. Seen a lot of great races here. Uh, how much do you enjoy coming out to Arklatex Speedway each and every time? Oh, I enjoy it all the time, Zach. You, you used I, to be, I, like, I like racing though better. I, I was gonna say you used to be a racer. Uh, you've been working as a track steward here, you know, on the on the racetrack for quite some time since I've been announcing here since '09. But uh, so you, you'd rather be putting your foot through the floorboard? Oh yeah. You've, a lot more fun there. You've won some races right here. Uh, yeah, I believe so. One. Well, we're greening our mini wedge car main event. And Racing Graham going to try to put the bumper to the 16 to Dustin Hennigan for the race lead. Who three and four. Maybe in a treacherous part here off the exit of turn number two. <laughs> Hopefully they don't go flying off the track. And Anyway, I trust them. Dustin Hennigan still with a race lead, racing Graham and nipping at his heels. It gives him a shot and a shorts off the exit of four down the front straight away. Racing Graham going to knock the back bumper off the 16 tonight. Oh, my. <laughs> they had a very exciting heat race, and racing Graham has had it. Dustin Hennigan says, well, I'm a pretty good blocker, too. And he makes his car wider than a triple wide trailer right now. Racing Graham appears to undoubtedly have the fastest wedge cart tonight. But Dustin Hennigan, well... The last name says it all. He's a Hennigan, and he knows how to keep his car out front. It may not, all, it may not be the quickest, but he's making it wide. And Racing Graham 
the frustration meter may about to go through the roof. He is not going to stop tapping on the back bumper to the 16. He knows he is there. Dustin feels it. And there he goes sliding up the racetrack and Drayson's going to go to the inside for the race lead. Go to North through one and two and Drayson Graham smashes the loud pedal. Dustin Hennigan about to return the favor. He gives him a major shot in the shorts there into one and two. This is fun and this is good. If you don't like it, you don't like these little mini wedge carts. I like it. I love it and I want some more of it. Racing Graham is cruising now. Racing Graham cruising pretty good in 28, able to distance himself from the 16 to Dustin Hennigan. Hennigan, though, I tell you this, you don't want to give up on Dustin Hennigan for the sole reason that, well, he's been very impressive, but we only got one more lap to settle the score. Racing Graham appears to have it in the in the bag. He's in the catbird seat, and he'll do it. His first ever win comes tonight at the Arco Tech Speedway for Racing Graham, the eight-year-old in 28, fist pumping hand out the window. Or not out the window, but out of the roll bar there. That was a good one. Woo. I tell you, you got to earn these things, I tell you. Toby Davis. 21D, rather. So three cars are ready to go 10 laps of distance for tonight's four-cylinder front-wheel drive main event. So we just had the winner of the second Johnny's Pizza, courtesy of Humphrey Racing and Mr. Ronnie Humphrey. So Brittany Shreen's out front, setting the pace at the Boot Hill or at the <laughs> Arcotech Speedway tonight. Tell you what, it doesn't never get fogged up up here in the booth like it does at some other area, other racetracks. I might have to put some Windex on this thing or some Rainex anyway. Fogged out. Brittany Shireen. Gone with the wind in this one. As her companion Sean Graham looks on right there from the infield. I tell you what, tonight could be a major big night for the Triple X racing crew out of Shreveport. If Brittany Shreen's able to hold on and win this one, that would mean two wins for Triple X Racing tonight with Racing Graham getting the mini wedge cart race. The factory stocks are fine. Back and away into one. Brittany Shreen, the pair of ladies left on the speed plant. Ashton Owens is second, of course. Like I said, looking to see this car count build in this class. We had up to 18 of them here, but a lot of those out of the Texarkana area as it was one of the first tracks around to really solidify and run this class on a week-to-week -week basis. So we hope to see it grow, and maybe we'll have more at our next event, which is all the way in September. It'll go by pretty quickly. Four laps to go this time by for the reigning Louisiana State Dirt Track champ, Brittany Shereen at Triple X. Your limited modified main events in the staging area. Limited modified, A main up next. It'll be two sticks in the air next time by. Wyatt Williams shows them two sticks. Brittany Shereen. A half mile away. From her second consecutive main event win here at Arclotex. Final 
final time down the back shoot in the turn three and four for the final time. Off of four, it'll be two consecutive victories for the young lady at uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Brittany Shereen, your four cylinder front wheel drive. Lights are out, Morgo Green. Back on the way at Ortho Tech Speedway, a little bit of modified main event. Heading into one. It's going to be Fowler clipped up for Junior, getting into one and two and a little bit loose. Man, got a little bit of a shot in the shorts there. A much different start in this one. Jody D. Davidson threw it to the bottom and went three wide for the lead on the opening lap. Now it's going to be the six of Wayne Patton up on four. Who's going to lead lap number one? He's got it. Wayne Patton leads lap one. He's going to be a little bit of a shot in the and six. Here comes Jody D. And these guys finish one and two respectively in the limited modified second heat race of the night as here comes Davidson trying to go door to door for the top spot. Comes up a little bit short there. Now it's up the board. Jesse Sharp is working it, working it well around the hub of the racetrack right now in 11S. He's going to move the inside of Tupper there for the third spot. Not able to sidestep and put it in his hip pocket quite yet. We got a Dandy Bruin and Vivian. Here comes Davidson. Davison not able to pull quite all the way to the inside of the tilt. Tilt take of the six of the Rustin Racer, Wayne Patton, who's got the top spot in hand. Wayne Patton looking awfully impressive. Looking sharp here in Vivian the night. Jody Davidson not able to mount a charge and get there as we are five in, 10 laps to go this time by the flag stand. Well, folks, he's a Patton. Wayne Patton, Lee Patton, Butch Patton, whoever Patton. He's, he's, Patton the, he's patting the race lead right now. But, uh, you know, something's to be said. Chris Patton as well. I'll tell you, the Pattons are a heck of a racing family. Butch Patton is a 1997 Southern United Professional Racing Series champion. Wayne Patton. I was going to get over here to Vivian to race very often, and he's going to make it worth the trip tonight. But he's got eight more laps and able to, to go along with that rhetoric. Will the headline be Patton dominates at Arclatex? Or will it be Davidson runs down Patton and steals a win away? Or is it maybe Jesse Sharpley? Oh, and there goes Patton just broke off the exit of two. Heartbreak Hotel for Wayne Patton. So Patton has to restart at the tail in six. Sorry, Michael was not on it. How about this restart for hot in Louisiana's Jesse Sharpley as they go three wide here for four, fifth, six down the back straightaway. Wayne Patton's got a, a hungry power plant underneath the hood, and he may be a little bit hot underneath the collar right now. But for the race on Texas.com, folks who watch this on demand, you had heard me announce that the six lost power but I wasn't sure maybe if he thought that there was something else for a reason that the caution came out. Boy, he just threw a haymaker and an elbow worth uh, a conversation post-race with the 7C of Williams. And watch this. Williams may not be able to drive back to him and return the favor. But right now, Patton is driving his way back up to the front. And right now, he needs to cross his fingers and toes for a caution to have a chance to come back up through the field. He is right now driving P.O.'d back to the front. Hot underneath the collar is the sixth of Rustin's Wayne Patton. Wayne Patton may end up coming home the bridesmaid tonight, but Jody Davidson says, we'll see you later, and we'll see you on another Dirt Track Saturday night. Or he'll see me and Victor Lane in about three more laps as he crosses the stripe, three more to go here at Arclatex. Wayne Patton has driven his way back to the front fearlessly and flawlessly. Wasn't even quite meticulous. He just knocked the doors down to that bridesmaid, and here he comes to the inside of Sharpley for second. Oh, and smoke for Jody Davidson, and Wayne Patton is going to take the race lead. Wow. Jody Davidson showing smoke, and Wayne Patton is putting on a show. Wayne Patton has defied the odds and came from dead last on the restart to see the white flag in his face this time by. Heartbreak Hotel for Jody Davidson. As it gets loud in the press box, as Davidson is up in heavy smoke like a Cheech and Chong tour. Oh my. Final time off of four. The white six. A face full of checkered flag. What a valiant effort for Wayne Patton and six. 
So it's going to be Beasley on the pole with Richard Holt alongside. Doug Vick Jr. inside of row number two. Billy Robinson, who set a torrid pace and won his first heat by lapping all the way up the fifth place. Lights are out. We go green for 15. We're green for 15. Here comes Billy Robinson already for the race lead. Oh, my. Just as Billy Robinson did in his heat race earlier tonight, he already has the top spot, and he'll lead lap one. Oh, my goodness. Billy Robinson's got a daggum hemi in that thing tonight. And I could drop the mic right now after I say show's over. But that's why we raced it to the checkers. But right now I'm <laughs> I'm almost leaning towards saying show's over. Pretty sure I just stepped to the restroom for just a few moments, came back, there's five to go here off of four. It'll be four to go. And uh, I was trying to find the zero one of Billy Robinson, and it appears that he has just lapped up to. Are you kidding me? He's lapped up to fourth place. Holy smokes, folks. It's Beasley. Oh, I gotta figure it out. I thought Eric Norris was surely, or Beasley is, heck, I don't know. All I know is, is that Billy Robinson's kicking their pills tonight. That's all there's really to talk about. And that is not a shot to any of you guys. I love all of you. Maybe if Mike Washburn was here, he'd be giving that 0-1 run. <laughs> I don't know. The white flag's out for Billy Robinson while everybody else is getting ready to see only two to go. Like, it's going to, I'll for sure be to the interview on time in this one. Because Billy Robinson has just put an absolute whooping. I'm telling you, folks, heart surgery earlier this year, it doesn't matter. Billy Robinson to victory lane at Arkle Tech tonight in 0-1. From Shreveport. So, Myers are actually, sorry, Dino Dean Rasco outside of the Arkle Tech's mechanical services. Bootlegger chassis number 45, Colt 45. 42 for McLeod, it's Timothy Holt. Ronald Rallo Pilkington in the yellow 22. Bo Perry in the laser race car number 24. Lights are going out, we go green for 20 laps. Bam! Cowboy Blanchard gets a good start on the outside of the Nightmare. Michael Knight as he goes in the one. Sean Graham gonna get the whole shot, but three, four wide for the race lead off the exit of two, down the back straightaway. Darn it over the race lead into the three, four. Who's gonna lead lap number one, the 45 of Blanchard and the triple. Oh, Graham over the top. Look out, everyone. Oh, my. 
Sean Graham over the top of three and four, and the caution will wave. There's one here back in 08. The lights are out. We're going green. Here we go. A much more even start down there. Oh! Nightmare. Michael Knight's about to make it a nightmare for the rest of the field. We're going to tack in behind. Poking in at nowhere to go. The 55 the grandstands. Line. Lights are out. We're going green. You come up here and talk. We're backing away at Arkansas Tech, center one and two. Got a heckler yelling from the grandstands for no particular reason. Into turn number three. Off of four down the front boulevard into one. Ronald Pilkey, they're gonna get a drive to the inside there. The 55 M of Myers, all those guys are able to restart up front where they initially started this race. Off of four, Cowboy still leads. So the former Cajun Cruiser Classic champion back in 2009 is gonna ride up to the second spot as he is the winner. He was the winner last night at the RPM Speedway in Crandall, Texas. As he got a little bit of a shot in the tail, think that time by the 55M of Cody Myers who won last Saturday at Boot Hill. Actually, of course, we talked about it down on in the infield earlier for fan appreciation. Myers crossed underneath the flag stand as the winner, but the inheriting victor was the driver who he's trying to take the second spot away from right now. Ronald Pilkington. After the disqualification for the 55 him, Cody Myers, and Myers is going to get a bigger run to the outside, and he'll take the second spot away from Ronald Pilkington. Pilkington going to get snookered and around the Pittsburgh Steelers 43 of Robbie Gibson, and the caution comes out. Between the great state of Texas at RPM and here at Arklatex, Blanchard trying to get his first ever win here in Vivian. The lights go out, and a good restart by Cody Myers. We're backing away. Rollo is going to dive it to the bottom of the Arkansas Tech Speedway and show some love to 45. 45 says no. Sit down and take a seat. But here comes 55. 45 plus 10. Well, that's 55, and here he comes. He's the second. Whatever that means. But Myers is then wheeling and dealing. It is only second start of the 2017 season, and he was very impressive last week into the Boot Hill Speedway. He's going to go to the inside for the race lead. And we get a caution by the same car who brought out the previous one. It's just as we are shaping right up there for as well. well. Cowboy Blanchard up to him to put his foot through the floorboard. 15 to go, 5 in. Here we go. Back on away into one. And here comes Warren. The other Hennigan Motorsports chassis in the field this week in this car. Finished second with Jason Eagles behind the wheel at the 5,000 to win in last season. And here comes Myers who is outside powering in into turn number three. Here comes Rollo. Three wide for second off of turn number four. Oh, some a little bit of contact there. Back into one. It's heating up. It's heating up for second. And trying to run him down for the race lead as these guys, the more they do battle for second, the more the Cowboy will be, be able to distance himself. Oh, there's a contact there for third. Rollo got into the 62X. A pair of Hennigan Motorsports chassis. That's Hennigan's old car with Josh Warren behind the wheel. Rollo, the former Cajun Classic winner right there. Trying something, but here comes Myers for the race lead. It's got to be a matter of time. We're 13, 13 to go, 13 lucky ones. Actually, sorry, it's 12. 12 to go. Into one. Myers all over the tilt tank of that bootlegger chassis floor. He's power number 45 of the Cachetta Racer, Richard Blanchard. Blanchard's down the back straightaway. Into turn number three. Next time by, it'll be 11 to go. Nine score here in Vivian, this 20 lap main event. Presented by Barksdale Federal Credit Union and Kenny Sewing. They want to be your financial partner for life. And for all your towing needs, Kenny Crawford with Coney's Towing has got all your towing needs taken care of indeed. Tell him Arklatex Speedway sent you. He might help you a little. Two, three. Off of four. A bottle that time by Cowboy. I'm going to open the door for Myers to pull to the left. To the inside, and here he comes. He's going to dive it to the bottom and a one and two. Myers to the inside for the race lead of the 43 who brought out two previous cautions. It's slow up in front. He got the car refired. We're clean and green. Green checkered. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> green yellow is out. Now we're back full green. Ten to go. Or nine to go this time by. Nine to go to settle the score. Cody Myers had marched all the way to the back deck of the 45 and went to the inside of him as we're green yellow once again. Robbie Gibson is way off the pace. He may need to go ahead and pull that bad boy down to the infield and get out of harm's way. Myers is making Cowboy earn this one tonight. And the yellow is going to wave here with 
eight laps to go. And he is very smart and wise, and he'll set the field. And the herd will hunt him for the race lead off of four. We're backing away. It's going to be Josh Warren who dies it back to the inside here for the race lead. But that outside momentum and all the advantage working to the favor of the 45 of Blanchard. The four wide there mid-pack. And the three and four. Cody Myers got a big drive there through three and four. And pushed and sets the car up. And here comes, oh my. I'm talking about a fly in the ointment. Here comes 24 like a laser. He's driving right now like he's got laser beams attached to his head. It's Bo Perry from Bozier City. Oh, my. That laser race car is rocking and rolling. Last time out, folks, he drove from 20th to finish second to Justin Whitehead in the main event. And he is absolutely wheeling it and dealing it right now. He said, give me another spot. One more spot deserves another. And the caution's back out. Is that 43 again? No, 43's in the infield. And it's going to be a good one. Lights are out. We're back on our way. And Shreveport racer Josh Warren got a great race start. He'll dive it back to the bottom just like he's done on the last three restarts. Myers powers back to his outside and regains the second spot. Here comes Pickett and here comes Myers. They're going to try to go three wide for third in the three and four, but Bo Perry comes up the racetrack and tucks in tow in line. Myers all over the back neck lid of the 45 down the front boulevard we go. It's five laps or four and a half laps to go when Cowboy Blanchard meets the midpoint of the back straightaway. Into three. He's been selling it on the outside. Oh, and a push that time for Cowboy. Opens up the door. Cody Myers going to take the race lead. Cody Myers takes the race lead into one and two. The only mistake that Blanchard has given in this race, and it cost him. It cost him big. Now the question is, will Cody Myers make a mistake, and will Cowboy be able to steal it away? Or does he even have to make a mistake for Blanchard to get back to him and steal this race away? and get back what he feels is rightfully mine. Blanchard's handling, it appears, has gone away just a little bit on the 45 right there off the exit. The car kind of stopped out from underneath him. As right now, Cody Myers flexing his muscles, showing his stuff and showing why for two weeks in a row, he is the man. He's the man, he's got a plan, and he's looking to put a checkered flag all up in his hand tonight. And he got a little bit of a bobble, got a little squirrely down the back straightaway. Cowboy's going to close the gap. Here comes Blanchard and Pilkington. The white flag is going to come out this time by. He's not quite there within striking this to throw it quick. Here he comes. Here comes Blanchard as Myers is all loose as a goose. Don't get him started. Down the back straightaway for the final time in the tournament three. Cowboy has no choice. He's going to have to throw it to the bottom of three and four for a slide job. And off of four, Cody Myers going to win your factory stock main event tonight. Your Kenny's towing factory stock main event to Dandy and Cody Myers stole it away from Cowboy. I was going to say, hopefully it's one of the Daniels bunch, but I know that both of them are now graduated college. Luke and Jake, and they wouldn't be in the beginner car anyway. <laughs> So Joseph Evans is behind the wheel of the 98. My apologies there, folks. Joseph Evans behind the wheel of this 98 car. To my knowledge, it's first ever time to be behind the wheel of a dirt car here at Arklatex Speedway. Here in these beginner cruisers. So I know that he doesn't have any relation to Travis Evans, I don't believe. Nope. But I have a feeling he knows those Gibson boys in them because he's got the Christensen Motorsports alongside the 98 there. I have a feeling he's about to get his first ever win maybe, so we'll get to talk to him about it in a moment. We'll find out. I tell you what, Amber White is going to make him earn it. The young lady out front with the race lead, Amber Whitehead, Nate 14. Like I said earlier, with just a few four cylinders here, what I told Brittany Shereen, hey, you guys spent a, your hard earned money on a pit pass and came here and you waited all night to get to this for your moment to shine, and these are these guys' time to shine. So they are due their recognition for coming and supporting Arkletech Speedway and looking to put on a show for the fans that are still in the grandstands, and they'll do just that. It's going to be three laps to go this next time, by, and you got a tight battle for the race lead. And the 98 of Davis is going to strike right there. The flag's in nearly takes the top spot by half of a cat's whisker. 
Not able to fully gain the top spot, though. They're door-to-door off the exit of two, heading down the back straightaway for one and a half laps to go. And Davis with that top lane, or higher lane, right to the center of the arc with Dex B. with Amber Whitehead not giving up. That lady's got some fight in her, doesn't she? And the passenger's in there bobbing his head forward like, go faster! And they're door to door for the race lead. I'll tell you what, the passenger's working his... <laughs> working it. And oh, Whitehead just lost it. Pulls it down to the infield. The tech may have got a, maybe it was showing her got a little too hot. The white is coming out for Joseph Evans in 98. So the final trip around the quarter mile level here in Vivian, Louisiana tonight. Amber Whitehead pulls back out, but it's not going to matter. Off of, or through three and four for the final time. Driving the Christians in Motorsports. Number 98 is first ever win at Oracle Tech Speedway for the beginner cruiser, Joseph Evans in 98.